Today we're going to talk a little bit about how we can use uh, Java to code Dijkstra. Uh, let's just have a brief look here at some Dijkstra videos on YouTube that might be useful as a lead-in to this class today. Okay, so if you're trying to learn Dijkstra, there are a couple of videos by this guy named Barn Grader, which does a great job of showing on pencil and paper how to do Dijkstra. And I think I mentioned to you that this particular way of looking at Dijkstra with the subscripts is great as an introduction. It's not so good if you're trying to transfer this algorithm to code. It's not clear how these subscripts should be coded. It's not clear exactly what kind of data structures to use here. There's an alternate video, and you can see it's done by this uh, computer science channel. And this one, if you were starting from scratch and trying to learn Dijkstra, this may not be as good as the other videos. But if you're trying to code Dijkstra, this is a much better video because the structures that he uses in this video are much closer to the structures that we're going to implement as we work on Dijkstra. So let's get a look at some of the stuff that's going on on this page here. And um, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to point you to the fact that there is this list of all the vertices. There is a, another list that basically is the same length as this list that keeps track of what is the shortest distance to get from the starting vertex to this vertex? And then there's a third list, which basically shows you what was the vertex you were at previously before you got to this vertex. So you can see that we're going to need to do these lists here. Also, we're going to need one more list that's going to keep track of our unvisited vertices or visited either one. We don't need to keep track of both of them. Just one of these two will be enough. When we were doing the prims, by the way, you'll notice as we go through this, this is extremely similar to prims because we're going to take a graph and turn it into a spanning tree, actually multiple spanning trees. That's what Dijkstra is. They're spanning trees. Uh, but you'll notice here that in, in when we did prims, I gave you about half the code and it didn't work out so well. So I'm going to try to give you a little bit more and try and gauge what's just the right amount so that everyone can get done in a reasonable amount of time, but you still need to put in some effort here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to start off by taking our adjacency matrix code and modifying it because previously when we had written our adjacency matrix code, it was an unweighted graph that we had and we need to obviously add weights now to be able to do Dijkstra. So that's one modification we need to do. There'll be some other modifications we need to do as well. So let's go and look at the auto grader assignment to see what format our grader, uh, our sorry, our finished product is going to be in what we need to output. So if we look at how the problem is presented to us, we can see that the data is in this format right here. The first number tells you how many graphs you need to analyze. And here we see that our data set is going to consist of two different graphs. The first graph here, this 5-7, refers to how many nodes and how many edges in the first graph. And then these are the individual edges themselves. And you notice that there are three numbers here instead of two. And the reason for that is that each edge now has a beginning, an end, and a weight. See that, right? And then here you can see the second graph is starting right there. And this one has seven edges, sorry, seven uh, nodes or vertices and 12 edges. And here they are. Now, down here are the answers that you need to produce. These two are for the first graph, and these two are for the second graph. And what I'd like you to do now is discuss with your partner, what do you think the first line is, and what do you think the second line is for each of these graph sets here? Take a, take a look and see if you can figure it out and discuss with your partner, what do these two lines for each graph represent? Any guess what this first row is? It's the total cost to visit each node from point A. That's what Dijkstra does. It calculates the total cost. You can see this part is zero because to go from A to A always costs zero. Here's how much it costs to go to B, C, D. Now, uh, Mr. Mulcahy gave us a hint what these are. What are these down here, the second row? What is that part here? That's right. This represents the path. And the way it represents the path is that this is the previous node that got us to the this node. So if I was going to draw an analogy between this row here, it's basically this list right here. 
Now you notice here they have letters and here we have numbers because we're using numbers to represent the nodes. Here they've given the nodes names. We're using numbers just as a simplification so that we don't have to do the translation between names and numbers. So in our data set, node A is node zero, node B is node one, et cetera. And these are the answers for the first graph and these are the answers for the second graph. When we're developing our code, we're gonna put lots of extra print statements in there initially so we can watch the algorithm unfold and help us debug. But eventually when we turn off all the debugging statements, our code should produce these four lines of output. That's how we'll know that our Dijkstra algorithm is working.